Tinkaton. Oh yes, finally, I get to talk about one of my favorite regional bird Pokemon. The Black Knight with shining armor so strong and defensible that nothing can take it down. I've learned a lot about myself lately. Like, I love pink little gremlins, I guess. Uh, back before Sword and Shield came out, when they were teasing Impidimp, I was in love. And even still, Impidimp is one of my favorite Pokemon from Sword and Shield. I even commissioned this art from Taplaus that I was considering getting tattooed on my lower leg. It's an Impidimp riding a Koalava, which was my first ever favorite Pokemon in my first ever Pokemon game, Silver. I ended up not getting it though, because I needed insulin and wrist surgery, but uh, I'm feeling these feelings all over again now. I freaking love Tinkaton. Tinkaton. There's just something about bright pink gremlins, I guess. But the point of this video is not to gush about how great this is. It's to explain why it is. From the obvious media tropes of little girl giant hammer, to the slightly more obscure Iberian folklore creatures, to the industrial revolution union busting in the US and Spain. Yeah, we're going all over time and space for this one. So buckle up, grab a snack, and watch out for this hammer attack. One look at Tinkatuff and Tinkaton, and yeah, she's obviously based on Poppy from League of Legends. I mean, just look at that. It just needs to be pinker. So they also brought in elements from Amy Rose from Sonic the Hedgehog. And Tinkaton's hair? Well, that's just the hair from Platinum the Trinity from Blaze Blue. These characters are all cute little girls with massive hammers. And now I'm starting to think that maybe Game Freak didn't look at these characters specifically and decided to base a Pokemon on them because that'd be a little weird. Rather, they're probably just looking at the trope as a whole because, uh, yeah, just to list a few more, there's Isuki from Sengoku Basara, Vita from Magical Girl Lyrical Nanoha, Felicia from Madoka Magica, Buttercup in Powerpuff Girls Z, Papika from Flip Flappers, Ramona Flowers from Scott Pilgrim, Harley Quinn from Batman, Malice from Malice, This Girl from God of War, This Girl, Terra has it, here's another perfect example, another, and another, so many, more, it doesn't stop, how big is this trope, is it as big as the hammers, and plus, while the character's personality isn't dictated by the trope, they do tend to be a bit more on the chaotic side. They love over-the-top cartoonish violence while simultaneously having an air of innocence, and they often have some sort of obsession. And the trope does extend beyond hammers a bit too, like the bludgeoning angel Dokuro-chan uses the same character trope, but she uses a spiked baseball bat instead of a hammer, for instance. But the Tinkaton line, yeah, I think they fit the personality tropes associated with the little girl giant mallet trope too. I mean, the short stature, along with that cutesy little look in the eyes, but also the confidence, the cry. Look how happy she is, wielding a massive weapon. Plus the over-the-top color, along with the over-the-top violence of a giant, uber-powerful hammer attack. And then the Pokedex mentions this intelligent Pokemon has a very daring disposition. Yeah, I'll say. They attack groups of Bisharp to steal their metal, and it knocks rocks into the sky with its hammer, aiming for flying Corviknight. They are violence and chaos, playing Corviknight golf. And the Pokedex mentioning their intelligence brings up another point. Look at their names. Tink-a-tink, Tink-a-tough, Tink-a-ton. They've all got tink. It's the sound of a metal hammer striking metal as they're all little blacksmiths. I mean, their Japanese names translate to blacksmith John, middle blacksmith John, and huge blacksmith John. Amazing. But also, they are all, of course, tinkerers, which is what you call people who take apart, build, and experiment with machines. Just like Tinkerbell, who actually is a tinkerer. And this pulls in another big trope, the cute little girl or beautiful young woman who are expert tinkerers or machinists or top-of-the-line expert hacker tech specialists despite their young age and or beautiful appearance. Like all of these examples and much, much more. But of course, the Tinkaton line are not just media tropes the Pokemon. They are very steel-type fairies, fey creatures, and I mean, Tinkatink for sure gives me Goron vibes, but there are actually a few actual fey creatures that we could look to. Some are even from the Iberian Peninsula, which is what Paldea is based on, and they fit pretty darn well with these Pokémon. But first, let's look at the generic concept of tinkering little fey creatures. It's pretty common. Gnomes are super into their machining. Dwarves too, and they're famous for carrying war hammers. Orcs and goblins in recent years have become tinkerers and metalworkers as well. But there is one pixie goblin-like folklore creature from Iberia that fits Tinkaton a ton pretty decently. I think. A ton. Let's Tinkaton about it. This is the Duende. 
They are very short and mischievous, and depending on the region, they do different things. But some of the most common things they do are sneak into your house at night, rearrange things, and steal small stuff like your silverware, not unlike this line stealing metal from Steel-type Pokémon. They can also live inside of your walls, particularly the walls around children's bedrooms, and they are known for turning nice, innocent little girls into disobedient ones. They will also sneak in at night and trim your child's unkempt toenails! That doesn't sound too bad. Uh, but sometimes they'll miss and cut off the whole toe! Trim your nails, kids, and drink your milk, because they will also always drink all of your milk. When outside of a home, though, they are known to throw rocks and branches at passers-by. They might even steal your things if they knock you out this way. Again, like Tinkaton playing boulder golf, smashing Corviknights and stealing their medals. So that's sort of the Duende as a whole. But there's one specific kind I want to talk about, and they are the Moros from Portuguese, Galician, and Asturian folklore. The Moros are duende who have existed since the beginning of time and spend most of their time underground, crafting treasures by smithing silver and gold that they've both mined and stolen from humans. And the female Moros, known as Enchanted Mora, are particularly interesting given that Tinkaton is a 100% female Pokémon. The Mora are very beautiful and known for their formidable strength. While the males work with smithing and crafting the finer things, these strong girls are the guards and the construction crew, creating buildings, smashing boulders with giant hammers, and moving heavy stones. Moro were used to explain all of the ancient dolmens and megaliths that are found across Iberia. And perhaps this is why Tinkaton is able to smack with her extremely powerful signature move, Gigaton Hammer. The raw strength in those arms. Another thing that separates the Mora from the Moros was their long and beautiful hair. Which again is perfect given that Tinkaton's hair is so long that it drags along the ground. And is very cute, and also wraps around her arms. Like those overly long sleeves with a thumb hole in the cuff. Which may relate to another aspect of the Mora. When not building or breaking things with their overwhelming strength, they were spinners, yarn makers, knitters. Maybe she made those gloves out of her own hair. Some variants have them always carrying large, heavy stones on their head or in their hair also. And they then always carry yarn with a distaff around their waists. And now, here's a little logic trail. If you take the distaff and put those giant boulders they always carry, or in this case, metals, that they always carry around instead of yarn, well, now it's a giant metal hammer. A giant metal hammer that she can carry with ease because of her overwhelming strength. Fun fact, Tinkaton weighs 248 pounds. The Pokedex says that the hammer is over 200 pounds. Tinkaton herself is very small and very strong. And honestly, if you look at Tinkatuff's hammer, if you remove these metal plates, it looks a bit like a distaff already. And on that topic, Tinkatink's little hammer resembles a little baby rattle. It sounds just like tink 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 Tink. And fun fact, each Evo just adds to it. See, Tinka Tuff's hammer is just Tinka Tink's, but with a longer staff and little add-ons around it. And then Tinka Tons still has the little Tinka Tink rattle in the core of the hammerhead. That's really cute. And then also, Tinka Tink has these baby teeth. Yeah, it's your typical cartoon baby with a single tooth in the middle of the mouth. And then Tinka Tuff is still just kind of the same, but bigger. And then Tinka Tun still has just a couple teeth and looks kind of like Abby Kadabby with teeth. Uh, well, we could just go back to the Duende for that. You see, a common depiction of goblins and trolls is them having big, crooked, square teeth. Maybe some missing. I mean, they don't exactly have dentistry out in the woods. And maybe Tinkatuff's teeth coming together this way is like a blacksmith's tongs, while also referencing craftsmen who hold things in their mouths. And Tinkatuns, then, could be a offset box jaw tongs. These kinds of blacksmith tongs. Upgrades, people, upgrades. But okay, new topic. They are also gremlins, a much more recent fey creature that came about during the Industrial Revolution, which honestly is very fitting since these Pokémon are so industrial themselves. Like most fey creatures, gremlins were used as a scapegoat when things went unexplainably wrong. Only this time it was industrial machines. Those dang gremlins stole one of them gears! They break machines and steal the metal parts out to make their own constructions. So, oh hey, that's just like Tinkaton, eh? And their popularity only grew over the following century. I mean, they were heavily used on work safety posters in World War II. In fact, there was a particular fascination with them in the aviation industry. 
perhaps notable again because of how much the Tinkaton line hunts poor Corviknight. I mean, Corviknight was the aerial taxi service in Galar, but have you seen their new dex entry? Corviknight can't serve as a taxi service in Paldea because the Pokémon's natural predators will attack it while it flies, endangering the customer. Yeah, these gremlin Pokémon ruined Paldea's aviation industry the same way gremlins supposedly ruined the real-world aviation industry. Paldea has to use stinking squawkabillies here. Nobody wants that. Ew! Gross! Just like the practice of union busting. Oh yeah, so this last bit may be a bit of a reach, admittedly, but it'll make more sense as we go on. Oh why, hello there, extremely pink Tinkaton. I'd like you to meet the Pinkertons, the Pinkerton Detective Agency, world-famous American union busters during the Industrial Revolution. While based in the US, they were founded by a Scotsman, and the only other big government to hire them besides the US was Spain. So that, the time period, and the name is a good connection already, but we'll get to that. The Pinkertons also famously hired the first female detective, Kate Warren, and would often employ those deemed unemployable, so women and minorities, to help them in their strike-breaking and union-busting. But what is that? Well, when factory workers would go on strike, demanding such things as a decent wage or gas masks and gloves when working with toxic materials, hippies, many factory owners would hire the Pinkertons to stop them. Sometimes it was as simple as uh, replacing every single worker on the spot. But sometimes, sometimes it was much more than that. It was much more hardcore. Like a strategic hammer slap on your hopes and dreams. In the railroad and steel mill industries particularly, the Pinkertons used intimidation via goonish violence towards the workers, their families, and even murder to prevent unions from forming. Remember, every single right workers have is paid for in blood, even things like 15 minute breaks and weekends. The Pinkertons would even plant spies amongst the factory workers to dissuade unions from forming in the first place. And like a gremlin, some would get potential union founders fired by setting up a machine failure and blaming it on them. And certainly, union busting and strike breaking sound like things hammers do, yeah? While not at all the only agency to do these things, they were the most well known, especially as they were the most violent and chaotic. So they became the face of union busting, and are thus referenced in plenty of media. Bonus fact! While not as ruthless due to things like laws, the Pinkertons business is still around, recently hired by Amazon and Starbucks. But about the whole Spain thing, so the Pinkertons' biggest customers were American factory owners as well as the US government, on behalf of the factory. Uh, paid for with your tax dollars. However, shortly after the US Civil War, the Spanish government hired the Pinkertons for a huge job. Stop the Cuban Revolution from happening. You see, after the Confederacy failed to keep slavery legal through violence, Spain's slaves in Cuba were getting encouraged to revolt themselves. Spain wanted none of that, so the Pinkertons were hired to take out any slave that was deemed dangerous, in the same ways they would take out Union founders. In the end, though, it didn't work. Cuba won. But interestingly, Spain has a huge history with Union busting, too. I mean, Spain hiring the Pinkertons goes well with their views on labor at the time. Repression and violence against the Spanish labor movement was widespread. In fact, when it came to this kind of violence, Spain famously was the most ruthless in Europe. Several massacres were had against protesters demanding things like better wages and safer work conditions. One even ended with around 200 protesters shot dead. I mean, look at the Wikipedia page for anti-union violence by country. Belgium, Russia, United Kingdom, Spain, Sweden. So like, yeah, there were of course many factors that led to the Spanish Civil War in the 1930s, but this was definitely one of them. I mean, at least the US government tried being sneaky by funding a private union-busting contractor, the Pinkertons, but in Spain, several of these massacres were done by the Spanish army at the request of those in power at the job sites. Oof. Maybe that is too tangential and out there for this Pokémon, but one thing's for sure, she's a fey creature conglomerate, a gremlin mixed with a duende and a mora, and of course with plenty of anime tropes slipped in there for good measure. And I stinking love it. She is right up there with Impidimp. But what is Impidimp, actually? Uh, well, I answer that in this video here. Be sure to check it out, and never stop using your noggin.